What's up, everybody? Are you guys ready for another math problem? So here's a good one. Uh, we are going to put our equation solving skills to the test. As you can see, we've got a cubic in front of us, 4x cubed plus x squared plus x minus 3 equals 0, and we're going to solve it for x under the real numbers, okay? So what on earth are we going to do? I mean, we've got a few options at our disposal. Uh, one, which, which I would probably call your last resort, um, would be the cubic formula. And by the way, obviously, we're going to do this by hand, guys. We're not going to, you know, stick it into Desmos or any type of graphing calculator. You know, we want to do this the, uh, the legit way. So cubic formula, I think, is pretty close to a no. Um, I'm going to be honest. I don't even know it, okay? <laughs> so let's skip the cubic formula. That's a nasty thing. It makes the quadratic formula look like a walk in the park. Second option would be the Rational Roots Theorem. I'll just abbreviate that RRT. So Rational Roots Theorem would be plausible. Uh, the only problem is when you look at your factors of P, which is the constant, and you test them divided by all of the coefficients of your leading term, uh, which is your Q, you're going to get mostly fractions, and those are not desirable to test when you're trying to do it by hand. So you're going to get, for example, your p's will be plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 3, right? Those are all the possible factors of minus 3. Um, and then you want to take that over all the possible factors of the leading term, and that would be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 4. So if you're lucky, okay, you might pick, say, the 1, the minus 1, those would be very easy to test and possibly could make it equal to zero. And then you could reduce that to um, a quadratic like using synthetic or long division. Let's not go there because uh, as you're going to find out, unfortunately, it's not going to be um, it's not going to be a whole number solution. OK, and I think the last thing we would want to do would be to try to do something like sticking a half in there or a quarter or three halves or three quarters. OK. So these first two don't look too um, promising. Although number two, I think, is plausible. I wouldn't call it the most promising approach. OK, so what about three? What's the other option that we have? Well, we often try to uh, solve it by factoring by grouping, because if you can factor it, then your zeros are pretty much on display. Uh, the problem with the, with the grouping, right, guys, is um, that minus three is pretty obnoxious, because it just doesn't allow you to combine them um, two at a time and get that nice factor grouped out. Uh, trust me, if you try it with the existing setup, it's not going to work. So guess what? There's a trick. We can still do the grouping, but we're going to do what I like to call forced grouping. Okay? So we're going to do forced grouping, and this is essentially a trick. Okay? And watch how we're going to make it work. I'm going to actually put the new equation that we're going to work with down here. Let me actually put this in a different color. Uh, let's go with this nice purple. So which, let's put this equation down here and check it out. We're going to do 4x cubed plus x squared plus x. However, instead of that obnoxious negative 3, we're going to turn it into an equivalent number, two of them, that will be more compatible to do grouping. See if you guys can figure out what we would do. If you said minus 4 plus 1, you're 100% correct. Okay? By simply turning that negative 3 into minus 4 plus 1, we are now, believe it or not, in a position to nail this thing by grouping. So let's go ahead, as we said, and write this as minus 4 plus 1. And now we're ready to rock and roll, guys. So this is the form that we want to use. So how are we going to group this? Well, we are going to group it by taking the 4x cubed and partnering it with the uh, with the minus 4, actually, not the plus 1. Actually, let's go to the minus 4, okay? So if you do 4x cubed minus 4, that will be one group. And then our other group will be the leftover, which is the plus x squared plus x, plus 1. And that, of course, is equal to 0. Now, it looks impossible. How on earth could these possibly group, right, guys? They do. Okay, they do. Why? Because we're going to factor out a 4 from this expression, 
and we're going to be left with x cubed minus 1. And then, of course, I still have my plus x squared plus x plus 1. And that, of course, is still equal to 0. Now, check this out. You guys probably know that x cubed minus 1, yes, is a difference of cubes. So we can use the formula. I'll just write it on the side here. Let's just do it in a different color. If you have a cubed minus b cubed, which we do, because one, of course, is just one cubed, um, we can rewrite it as a minus b. And I don't have enough room here, so I'll just continue on the next line, times a squared plus ab plus b squared. How cool is that? Now watch what happens. Let's close this off. Let's go back to our original color. All right, now we're going to have 4 times, we're going to replace the x cubed minus 1 with, with its factored form, which is going to be x minus 1 times, check this out, x squared. What's a, b going to be? It's going to be the x times the 1, so it's plus x, and then b squared is just 1 squared, so plus 1. And look at that, we have our matching group. The x squared plus x plus 1. I'll rewrite it. And you can see that that is now a common factor, which we achieved by forced grouping. So plus x squared plus x plus 1. And I'll just put that in parentheses just so it's clear that that's another factor. We're going to pull that out from both of these. So now I'm going to pull out my x squared plus x plus 1. I just have enough room here at the bottom. And what am I left with? I am left with the 4 times x minus 1, so I'll rewrite that, and I effectively pulled out an x squared plus x plus 1 from both terms, so that means if you pull it out from itself, you're left with plus 1. Okay, not bad, right guys? So we now have x squared plus x plus 1 times 4 times x minus 1 plus 1. Let's just do a little bit of simplifying. I'm going to keep that there just so I can uh, see it, and I'm going to erase uh, just this stuff right here. All right, guys, and just to offset it from the rest of the work that I did, let's go into purple and let's finish this sucker off. So we now have x squared plus x plus 1 times I'll now do a little bit of distribution here. That will be 4x minus 4 plus 1. That would get you 4x minus 3. And of course, this was always equal to 0. Sorry if I forgot those down below. So we know that that's equal to 0, and this was equal to 0. All right, we are factored. The whole point of this was to get it factored because now your roots are basically handed to you. This one is pretty close to trivial. We'll just say that 4x minus 3 has to equal 0. And so that means that x would equal 3 quarters. Bam. There's one of your answers. Now, do we get another one from the other factor? The answer is no. Uh, remember, we agreed to just uh, solve this under the real numbers. This one will not work. Uh, it's a quadratic expression, and the discriminant is less than 0. Remember, you can just test the nature of your roots by doing the discriminant. So if we were to do b squared minus 4ac, that would equal, if this is your, your a will be 1, your b will be 1, and of course your c is 1. If we put that into the discriminant, you're going to get b squared, which is 1, minus 4, times 1, times 1. That's negative 3, which is less than 0. So therefore, those would be imaginary. So the only real root which we cared about is x equals 3 quarters. And so true to form, if you had tried that rational roots theorem, yes, it would have gotten it for you, but that would have been extremely tedious, and there's a huge chance of a computational error. If you do it through the forced grouping, we nail it, and we get the answer of 3 quarters. How about that, guys? I hope you enjoyed. And of course, I will look forward to seeing you soon for another fun math problem with art.